you usually need sand to make glass. But this entrepreneur crushes bottles back into sand. She co-founded what could be Louisiana's biggest glass recycling operation. And in about two years, she saved four million beer bottles worth of glass from landfills. Never let anyone tell you that individuals cannot make a difference because all of this is thanks to incredible individuals. Glass Half Full operates in a state with a disappearing coastline. And it's ramping up at a time when global supplies of sand are actually running out. We are using up sand at a faster rate than it can be naturally created. So volunteers use the crushed up glass to help rebuild the coastline. But is dumping material made from trash into nature a good idea? There's a ton of skepticism, mostly about the sharpness of the sand. We went to New Orleans to see how one company is building back shorelines with worldwide waste. Francisca Troutman started Glass Half Full with her boyfriend in February of 2020, while they were still college students. One night during college, over a bottle of wine that we knew would end up in a landfill, we decided instead of continuing to complain about the problem and the lack of glass recycling, that we would just do something about it. So we had this idea, but that was about it. No waste management experience, no recycling experience. They raised about $18,000 to cover startup costs, including a machine that could grind up one bottle at a time. Crowdfunding in the beginning was really crucial. It not only got us money, but got us a lot of community support as well. As this literal mountain of glass started to form in a like residential neighborhood, we're like, okay, we gotta do something here quick. Since moving into this warehouse in August 2020, they've received a nonstop avalanche of glass to recycle. We're receiving so much more glass than we're able to process, as you can see by the mountain behind me. Traditional recyclers send the crushed glass to manufacturers, which mix it with other materials and then melt it all down to make new bottles. But Fran says there aren't any of these facilities nearby. And then it doesn't really make sense environmentally because you're spending all of that gas to send a super heavy product four hours away. So they decided to skip that step. The goal was always to be able to recycle the glass locally. Glass Half Full receives about a garbage truck load of glass per week. People can drop it off for free or pay to have it picked up. Once a can is full, we will dump it into our glass mountain. Unless it's a special color, um, it'll be mixed into here. Colorful bottles can be turned into specialty sand that sells at a higher price. So this is blue sand made from Bombay gin bottles. Artists really love to use it. People love to use it in their gardens. But most bottles are thrown onto what Fran calls Glass Mountain. So Glass Mountain is always expanding and contracting. We're always adding glass to it and taking glass away to be crushed. Woo! Eventually, workers scoop the bottles up with this loader and dump them into a crushing machine. metered out into the conveyor belt and it'll go up this conveyor belt and hit the hammers where it'll be crushed um, and then turned into sort of a mixture of sand and gravel and labels. The pulverizer leaves behind some larger chunks of glass that are too big to use. Everything that's bigger than three-eighths of an inch will be taken out so that'll include labels, metals, caps. Anything non-glass will come out of this process. They're still figuring out what to do with these leftovers. The newer models allow you to send this waste stream back through the system. So we're working on raising money in order to get that new system. For now, it's piling up in the back of the warehouse. Can we reuse it? Can we recrush it? How can it be utilized instead of sending it to the landfill? Brandon Max try to get creative with all kinds of non-glass stuff people drop off. We separate all the metal for metal recycling and the plastic we're separating for a special project. Stay tuned. Like taking dirty cardboard that can't be recycled to a pig farm to become compost. At the warehouse, some usable sand is piling up too because one crucial piece of equipment is too small. You can really see the difference in size. 
of this compared to our machine, so our machine can process a lot quicker than this can sift. The sifter filters out any leftover label pieces and sorts the sand by size. And you just scoop the unsifted product, put it in the top, and it'll shake it all down until it's separated into each of the five sizes. The largest grains of glass help pay the bills. Glass half full sells them as gravel. Some buyers mix it into flooring. The smallest type of sand is a fine powder. This is like the consistency of flour. It's extremely soft. I wish everyone could touch it and walk on it. It goes into sandbags the company gives away for free. People use sandbags to put up against their doors, up against their homes, where anywhere where water could get in, because we're super prone to flooding here. In between the powder and the gravel is coarse sand, the kind Fran and Max use to rebuild the coast. So this is like the size we would be using for coastal restoration. You can see it's not sharp, so it's not gonna cut me. At an event called a deployment, the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana dropped about 10 tons of recycled sand along Lake Pontchartrain. This is the battlefront that y'all are helping us to protect today. Thank you for coming. Fran and Max hand out the sand in burlap bags, which were donated by local coffee roasters. We like being able to move it with manpower and kind of get as many people involved as we can. It's a really beautiful thing to see. Volunteers load them onto a boat. Hey, no problem. Then the team drags the 35 pound bags to the site. They layer the sandbags in a line, connecting two pieces of land. These sacks will biodegrade in about six months. U.S. Fish and Wildlife agents returned with more volunteers a week later to plant bulrush saplings. The idea is that the plants will take root and hold the sand in place, creating new land. Fran and Max spent a year working with scientists to make sure their product was safe for ecosystems. We were awarded a grant from the National Science Foundation to work with Tulane University scientists and engineers to dive deeper into that research. They found that sand made from glass doesn't leach anything into the water and that plant life can grow in it. And it actually looks like it grew the best in the mixture of the recycled glass sand with the native sand, which is really cool. The researchers haven't tested whether animals can eat it yet, but Fran has. And that's actually been tested on my dog who ate a lot of the sand one day and we were like, <laughs> but she uh, pooped it out, so <laughs> all good. <laughs> that's all really good news because even though Louisiana's land loss has been slowing down, huge chunks of wetlands could still be swallowed up in the next few decades. These areas are essential habitats for wildlife, and they help protect nearby communities from storms. You can imagine a storm uh, which is fueled by the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico as it begins to cross over wetlands, it begins to weaken. That's especially important in New Orleans because the city is sinking. It was built above sea level in the early 1700s. But today, about half of it is below. Meanwhile, rising global temperatures make storms stronger and cause ocean levels to rise. So New Orleans needs all the storm and flood protection it can get. If that weren't enough, there's another problem Fran and Max want to take on. A shortage of sand globally. And that's because we use sand in a lot of things. So concrete, bones, toothpaste, paint, coastal restoration, sandbags. But you can't use just any sand. It's a sand shortage of a specific type of sand, which is a coarser, a bit more angular sand. That means desert sand doesn't cut it. It's too rounded from being blown around by the wind. Most industries dredge sand from the bottoms of lakes and rivers. Dredging is really the only mechanism right now to get sand. Extremely costly, both environmentally speaking and you know, fiscally speaking. A lot of it's used in construction. Every year, more than four billion metric tons of sand go into glass and concrete for buildings. Glass half full is a long way from making a dent in that. Fran and Max hope their story will inspire others to make a difference. I think this is really more so the story of, of a community coming together uh, to say we, we demand change and we're not gonna wait any longer. Two individuals decided to start this and now over two million pounds of glass are not in a landfill and they're making a difference in other areas.